Hi guys. I'm back today with two of my favorite people in the world. Brilliant herbalist. We have Jeannie and Heather with us today. And you've heard me talk about in one way or another at Sunshine Botanicals how our products are made. You know all about my passion for plants and you've heard me use or seen me use the term wildcrafting a lot. It's big in beauty media right now, but I'm not sure everybody really even knows what that means. What I've asked them to share with you today is super important because what does this mean to you at the end of the day? When you're purchasing products and you're reading product labels and you want to buy or use super clean things, how do you know? You see the term organic, you see wild crafting, what does all of that even mean? Well, since this is such a near and dear part to not only my brand, but my life, how these ingredients are resourced, harvested, and used to create the power that's experienced with our products, wild crafting is huge. And I would like to go straight to the authorities to talk about what is wild crafting and why does it matter? Jenny, would you start with us, please? Yeah. So long before we cultivated in rows or square gardens, our ancestors were wild crafting. It's just basically looking at what grows around you and harvesting some of those plants for or roots or many, many parts, barks off trees and something like this, lichen, which is a usnea species off of trees, even things that were growing on the on mushrooms. the bark itself, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and we have um, done it for centuries and thousands of years. So I love that people are getting back to it more. Uh, my philosophy is to try to find the common things that are in abundance and to harvest them equi equitably and sustainably by choosing the right season, that's important. And so this time of year in, in late April and spring, we're looking at the parts of the plants that are above ground and you're not actually killing the plant, so that's a very sustainable wild crafting thing to do to properly identify first is mm -hmm. most important, but also that you can eat some of this and you can make your own medicine and you still leave the plant to continue to grow and spread. Absolutely. I want to add one thing if I may. Um, the, the difference between organic and wild crafting, she pretty much summed it up. Wild crafting means we are out in nature and we're foraging for what is growing. We're looking for our healthy ingredients, right? Whereas if you see the term organic is a type of farming where things are cultivated, meaning things, meaning things are planted intentionally in rows to end up with the finished, um, you know, product. What's really cool to me, and I'd like you to speak to this if you would, about wild crafting is there's not a chemical in sight. When we're out like this, depending on the part of the country we're in or what we're searching for, this is as pristine as God ever made a plant. So when we find the tops, flowering tops, or even harvest the roots of some of these plants, there's never been anything man-made on these ingredients. Is that a fair way to compare the difference? Yeah, I'd say that's good. And another thing is that these plants in the wild have to fight for survival. Oh. So sometimes the constituents, I, you know, without without the ability to test, the constituents and the nutrient value increase because we're not dealing with the same dirt in a row. Wow. Even though organic is great, you know, they, they use implements of worm castings and compost and manure and things like that. But right now, like you got a lot of leaf matter that's falling down every year to compost these plants. There's mushrooms that deteriorate. So there's just naturally occurring so fertilizer. So the nutritional value of the finished product or plant is much higher when you wild craft it. Wow, it's my feeling. Wow, very cool. Heather. There are so many things that came up for me when you were talking that I wanted to add. A few of them are that yes, the nutritional and the medicinal value of wild plants is often higher than in cultivated. And Jeannie said it really well. I mean, basically the reason for this phenomenon is because when a plant is in the wild, it has to produce these chemicals to deal with drought, to fight off pests, to deal with a lack of sunlight. These chemicals that it produces, these flavonoids and these terpenes and all of these different phytoconstituents 
are what we call medicine. This is what we use to change and develop and nourish and um, shift our own bodily physiological resources in all of these ways. And so by using wild plants, we're actually increasing uh, their potential to be effective in our bodies as medicine, which is uh, one of my favorite things about wildcrafting. Now there are a number of things to look for when you are looking for wildcrafted medicinals. And when we're talking about integrity and ethics and conscientiousness within the wildcrafting world, we're talking about not taking more than you need, whether it's us, a team of wildcrafters who are out there, you know, digging up yellow root or harvesting usnea lichen. We don't take more than what we need because we want this to be a truly sustainable practice for, you know, seven generations ahead. Um, we, we don't uh, get consumed by, there's this kind of phenomenon called plant lust, which is like, you know, you see this beautiful patch of violets and you just want to harvest it all, but do you really need that much? These are some of the questions that you want to ask yourself when you're in the market for wildcrafted um, skincare or herbal products or when you're wildcrafting yourself. Uh, we also, you know, adhere to ethical standards like taking one in ten plants, taking, you know, not the largest plant in a patch, but really being very conscien conscientious about its growth cycle throughout the year, what other animals or humans are using those particular stands of plants, and how that particular microbiome and uh, zone of uh, environmental space has been occupied throughout the seasons, and you know, it's not all about us, so we want to make sure that we tread lightly on the environment as we're doing this. And the, the real beauty too is that often plants that are wild crafted will really benefit and grow stronger, grow healthier, yes. grow taller, and really uh, adapt and have a positive outcome from that little bit of human input of being harvested. Ladies, we could talk all day. Is this fascinating? Thank you so much for this amazing information. And I want you to, understand again why in skincare i am in the middle of the blue ridge mountains in the woods talking about skin because this is where your ingredients grow you as the consumer have choices and i know that we're all overwhelmed with so much information we don't know what to think we don't know what to believe we certainly don't know who to trust but when you are reading ingredient labels on any product Think about this. Think about the things that we're going to be showing you through this series of programs. What is the ingredient and where does it come from and why does it affect your skin? Come back and join us on our next segment because I want to talk to Jeannie about how the lunar calendar affects and impacts this entire process. Join us again. Thank you so much. I'm Emily the Skin Whisperer from Sunshine Botanicals where herbal medicine meets corrective skin care. Thank you ladies. This is awesome.